A lot of the early history of Grayson, Kentucky and Carter County actually runs through this historic cemetery. We are in old Grayson Cemetery, just in the city limits here of Grayson, Kentucky. Now, J.D. Roderick wasn't even from Grayson. He wasn't even from Kentucky. So how did he end up buried here in this cemetery in an unmarked grave in a potter's field? Let me tell you the story of a bank robbery gone wrong. Forgotten by time, lives ended by the hand of someone else in cold blood. We finish their stories because they were not able to finish their own. You're watching Vintage Murder, a Wit Docs series. They used nitro to blast into the bank. The town had no law enforcement, so who was going to stop them? A gang of six bank robbers, robbers with experience, had formed a gang and converged on the small and unsuspecting community of Willard, Kentucky. The small town, barely a dot on the map today, was thriving. The railroad had brought along with it new opportunities and new business, and people were in Willard, Kentucky to take advantage of it. Among those were two local boys from Carter City, Charlie and Steve Stamper. The Stampers were already implicated in a robbery of the Carter City Post Office, and they were on the run. We really don't know how they met up with the four outlaws from Cincinnati, Ohio, but somewhere along the way, they made the acquaintance. The Cincinnati Gang of Four also had experience, experience that would see them through the robberies of several banks in the Midwest. Tom Hall, J.W. Wood, Thomas Brown, and the man we are looking at today, J.D. Roderick. With the newly formed gang, the target of the Willard Bank would surely be a breeze. Get in, rob the place, and get out before anyone knew what's happened. However, as we all know, even the most thought out plans can go wrong. The group had planned to meet in Ashland, Kentucky and take the train to the EK Junction. From there, they would take the train to Willard and it was this train that they would hijack to use for the getaway. Once they arrived to the EK Junction, they discovered there was no train going to Willard that night. They decided to walk several miles. So they did, and they made it. The gang thought they had caught a break when they saw the locomotive in Willard already fired up. They quickly located the guard of the train, tied him up, and then pointed their eyes towards the bank. They stood guard outside the bank while a few of the gang members went into the bank to finish the job. As mentioned, Nitro was their explosive of choice. An explosion ripped through the bank and shook the small community of Willard, Kentucky. The door of the vault rocketed through the brick of the bank. Obviously, the citizens knew that something had gone terribly wrong. As the robbers began to make their way towards the treasure, another unexpected discovery. Behind the door of the vault, there was a second vault one that they had not planned for. As they readied a second blast, they were confronted by a mob of citizens, an angry mob, an armed mob determined to save their livelihood. The gang would now make a run for it. Good versus bad, the two sides began trading shots with each other. The gang scrambled to get to the train, and they did. It was hijacked and they headed back towards the junction. Before they made it there, they decided to jump off the train to make a run for safety and more importantly, fool the chasing mob into a chase in the opposite direction. What they didn't know, a posse with dogs in tow had been tracking them. The posse caught the gang just after sunrise and another battle ensued. Two of the criminals were wounded and the other four were captured. J.D. Roderick was shot in the stomach during the battle. He would linger for a few days and ultimately pass away. Before dying, he would make his true name known, J.D. Roderick. 
he had been using an alias. He gave word to please tell his mother what happened. His mother would be in Athens, Tennessee. His death is what brings us here to this cemetery in Grayson, Kentucky today. It is said that he is buried here in an unmarked pauper's grave in Old Grayson Cemetery in Grayson, Kentucky. A few things to go over. I know this is not exactly a murder in the sense that the rest of the stories have been on, but the story was fascinating and I wanted to tell it. The remaining five men were jailed here in Grayson, Kentucky. Wood and Allen were convicted and sentenced to four years. Steve Stamper received five. Brown and Charlie Stamper received nine years. It is said that Charlie died while incarcerated. The Willard Bank closed shortly after. The town is now just a very small community and the last remaining bank just closed down. I also have read a conflicting story that J.D. Roderick was sent back to Tennessee for burial. The story appeared in the Lexington Herald in 1905, so this would have taken place around that time. Another crime, another bad ending, another episode of Vintage Murder. Forgotten by time, lives ended by the hand of someone else in cold blood. We finish their stories because they were not able to finish their own. You're watching Vintage Murder, a Wit Docs series. <laughs>